Hello YouTubers and fellow Whovians, and once again, welcome to another Doctor Who action figure review. And as you can see today, I shall be taking a look at a loose figure. And as you can see before you, it is the crinoid as seen from the classic Fourth Doctor adventure, The Seeds of Doom, which was first released back on the BBC in 19... 76. Absolutely amazing story. I totally recommend that you all go out and see that story. It is an absolutely amazing story. One of the best stories of all time. And the Chronoids are one of the best one-off villains of all time, just like Sutek the Destroyer and a few other villains around that era. So yes, as I said, this is a loose figure. This originally came out, I think, back in 2012 in the Seas of Doom set. It came along with a version of the Fourth Doctor, as played by Tom Baker, who has a sword, and basically that's just the version of the Fourth Doctor that came in the Eleven Doctor set, which was released five years ago now. And uh, I thought, well, I don't really want another version of that because I don't like getting twice figures, especially if it's just something unnecessary. Unless it was something like an army building thing, like a Dalek or a Cyberman, then I'd say, yeah, okay, fine, fair enough. But because it's a Doctor and I don't really army build Doctors unless there is a difference in that particular costume or outfit I tend just not want to buy it and I was really frustrated because I really wanted this crinoid figure but happily some time later I got this for my uh, 18th birthday as a loose figure and I think that um, it's a godsend that this was given to me loose. Uh, we won't talk about who gave it to me because, well, that's another story. But yeah, I think that this is an absolute amazing figure. It just looks like how the crinoid did in this story. So first off, we'll take a closer look. And to be honest, the camera is not doing it justice right now. I may have to edit it and edit all this with the lighting and everything so I'll just give you a closer look and hopefully you can see because this is a quite a dark figure itself with all the green and things you can't really see all that much but I must say the, the detail on this is just impeccable this is a great job that has been done by character options and this is again some of the best work they've ever done now as many eagle-eyed viewers would know, this is basically the Axon figure that, that was released some time before this got released. And that's fine, because that's how it was in the program. They reused the Axon costumes for the crinoid costumes, but they just made them look like plant creatures. The interesting thing is, this figure actually got made before the Axon figure. So therefore... This was meant to be released in 2010. It got pushed back over and over and over again. And this just ended up being released in 2012 as part of this set. I don't know why they did this. It was meant to be a builder figure. Because, because for instance, the head can pop off. Uh, it can pop off. <laughs> Believe me, it can pop off. It is removable. Uh, and the reason for this is because it was a builder figure, much like the K1 robot that came as part of the very first wave of classic action figures back in 2008. But yeah, the detail all around is just impeccable in my opinion. It's just, it's just amazing all around with all the roots, just all the green, like all the organic stuff. It, it just looks like an absolutely disgusting monster and. It's just like how it looked in the program, the actual costume. It's just all around bloody amazing, in my opinion. Uh, the face sculpt, 
see if I can get it to light up a little bit. I mean, the weather outside doesn't help because it's abs it's an absolutely awful day outside while I'm filming this. But I think the face sculpt, you can't really tell on camera, unfortunately. Believe me, it looks a lot better in real life. It really does. It looks like one of those horrific things that you see in a horror film. And, you know, some of you won't believe that this is actually something that was in Doctor Who once. Yeah, the face sculpt, in my opinion, is absolutely amazing. The camera just does not do this any justice at all. I'm going to have to do something about this while I'm editing this video. Um, but yeah, the detail all around is just excellent. 10 out of 10 for me. Uh, articulation head can do a 360. And again, you can see more of the detail all around. And the arms, they can do a 360 degree turn. They're also ball jointed, so you can move them out to the side. There is articulation at the wrists or the hands, whatever you want to call them. That's very nice. There is articulation at the waist that can do a 360 degree turn. There's articulation at his very stumpy legs, they are ball jointed as well, so they can go out to the side and they can move around and they can go back and forward. And there's also articulation at the ankles, which I quite like, I think that's very nice. And yeah, so yeah, has a quite an extensive amount of articulation. This guy, so uh, I think this is a very good uh, thing, especially for younger audiences, in my opinion, for the younger collectors. So you can move them about a lot. I think this is a very good figure to display on the shelf, to be honest, because uh, I don't know, just it's it's just different. Uh, it stands out on the shelf, in my opinion. It's a giant plant light monster. What's not to like about this? I think it's absolutely amazing, this figure. It's one of the best figures that's ever been released by Character Options. I know I've said that uh, quite a bit of late, but it is true. They do amazing figures, and it's such a shame that they don't do as many nowadays. I hope that a Character Options do more 5 inch figures because they're. They really are amazing, and it's just such a shame that they went to a lower scale because it's a lot more difficult to make smaller scales this detailed because smaller scale, harder to paint, etc., getting actors' likenesses. Uh, the monsters aren't all that bad, depending... Well, it depends what the monsters are, really. But I think this is an example of why capture options they should just stick with the five inch range with Doctor Who because this is just outstanding in my opinion. Also comes with these two little pod pods. You get a closed pod and you get an open pod, which is where the crinoid comes from. And I think it's very nicely detailed. The paint works very good. And you just got all the vines coming out of there. So yeah, very nice detail in my opinion. And here is the crinoid that stood alongside the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. And you can see that the crinoid is a bit taller. He's one of the taller figures out of this range. Uh, and stood alongside the fourth Doctor. I say it looks just about how it did in the programme. Tom Baker himself was a tall actor. I, I believe he is the tallest of Doctors, uh, along with John Pertwee. So I think these two on the shelf, they definitely do belong together, and it works very well with my 11 Doctor set, 4th Doctor, as uh, this particular figure represents what we saw in this story as well as some other stories around this particular time. I hope you all enjoyed this action figure review guys. See you next time.